Eternity by Alfred Lindelof Chapter 6 Six Months' Time Oh yeah, we tested it for sure. Detective O'Hare was losing his patience with me. Use blood was there. Shit, use blood was everywhere. He clearly didn't have his fourth donut that morning. Yet. So what's the problem? Bursting out in borderline barbarian aggression? I couldn't help myself. I was getting frustrated, which made me immediately follow the question with another question. Why am I even here? I do love questions. Why being the most abundant question passing through my mind these days, and I suppose I may ask too many questions in general, but that particular question, though said aloud, was only meant for myself. They pulled me out of the car, I thought. The problem is... O'Hare chiming back in before his partner could speak, again. About six months ago, you took this precious angel. He stopped talking long enough for his pudgy, filthy fingers to pull a picture from a parcel and place it on the metal table before me. A photograph of Evelyn. One of her college graduation photos. A photo that I took. It also happened to be my favorite picture of her. She was beautiful, inviting even, glowing with pride in herself over the culmination of two courses in biology and a midway major change to computer engineering. It must have been the most recent picture they could find of her. Why are they showing this to me? I thought. This beautiful girl, Adam, you see her? Evelyn, that's her name, right? You took her all the way out to the country, and you killed her. O'Hare finally got to the point. It only took two hours of beating around the bush for them to tell me why I was being questioned. N no was all I could say. The emboldened accusation shocked my core. I wasn't expecting to be accused of murder. Killing Evelyn? How could I even think of killing someone so pure? Everything Evelyn ever did was for the benefit of somebody other than herself. No? You sure about that? You drove her body off a cliff, asshole. Name calling during an interrogation? Rude piece of shit. No, I was there. In the car. We, we both went over the cliff. A shaky voice and trembling hands were indicative of my realization. I may sound a little off the rocker to everyone else. My unrelenting self-loathing, which took control of my life for the prior six months, distracted me from creating a necessary alibi. Anything at all that could scratch the surface of an explanation as to how I was still alive. Instead, I was finishing up a half-year-long depression-fueled delusion, depicting a world where people believe you when you say something crazy. One by one, the faces of folks I talked to about Evelyn started popping into my imagination. Similar to the slideshow from a photo booth, every single face would flash a micro-expression grimace when I explained the accident to them. After which, most would force out a fake smile, offer a semi-sympathetic embrace, and their condolences infused with skepticism. I never noticed once. We did test the car, Adam. Detective Boulder finally said calmly. He paused for a moment, his weathered eyes observing my reaction. We checked under the seats, we checked the dashboard, I'm not sure there was an inch of the car we didn't test. But your story doesn't make any sense. Your blood was everywhere, Adam. I'm talking everywhere. And I'm tired of sitting here in silence, so I'll try to elaborate. For there to be that much of used blood? O'Hare couldn't keep his mouth shut long enough for Boulder to explain. Shit, used to had to, well, shit used to had to have been mangled up with the car. His momentary chuckle turned into a childish mockery, making him even more annoying if that's possible. Which obviously used wasn't, because, you know, he's here talking to us now. Without a scratch mind years, and poor Evelyn, man, she wasn't even recognizable. O'Hare began placing several more photographs in front of me. Photos of the accident. Physical screenshots of the most painful memories that I have. And I had to look at them. There, on that table. Picture. Of the burning grass. Picture. Of the trees with char. Picture. Of the broken glass. Picture. Of the mangled car. Picture. Of the empty seats. Picture. Of the melting wheels. Picture. 
Image of myself uninjured. Picture of the molten steel. But worst of all, among these pictures, ranging there from near to far, were pictures of my Evelyn on her back and black as tar. I stopped looking at them. They hurt too much to keep my attention any longer, so my gaze gravitated back to Boulder. His eyes never left me once. Adam, we have a witness claiming that you came home one night covered in what you claim to be your own blood. Gary? I whispered. Wrong move. One name, two syllables uttered under my breath, and O'Hare found me guilty before I could speak any further. He glanced at Detective Boulder with a smug as shit expression plastered on his face. It was an expression that told me I was in trouble. One that said, we got him. One that said I needed a lawyer. You see, from what we hear, you just took her out to propose. The pudgy prick carried on with his wrong deductions while deducing which donut would be famous number four from the box on the table. So I figure when she said no, you just couldn't take it. All the plan and all the money for the ring? You snapped and you just killed her! He shoved a large triumphant bite into his fat fucking face. The wind was removed from my lungs in sheer disbelief. I silently shifted my gaze back and forth between them as Boulder stared into my soul and O'Hare continued with his gross accusations. Here's the kicker, you put your blood all over the car to make it look like you was involved too. That's premeditation, asshole. Like we couldn't figure it out. He laughed again. Then the annoying troglodyte's elbow nudged into Detective Boulder. I swear, some of you criminals are just stupid, huh, Charlie? It's Charles, Boulder said back, stern, as if it was the seventh correction that day. Again, please stop touching me. Adam, the evidence against you is pretty conclusive. If you're saying this is somehow a mistake, would you possibly mind recounting the events that transpired that day? Yeah, you might as well confess now. A puff of powdered sugar popping out with every consonant. If you confess now, you may get the easy off sentence of life without parole. You could not count the crumbs coming out of his mouth. Another sugar-powered powder puff filled the room before he swallowed his bite. Too bad. I was hoping he'd choke on it. His voice then, for the first time since the beginning of the interrogation, dropped to a tone that cursed my ears as it hit them. Of course, we're gonna be pushing for the death penalty. I didn't kill Evelyn! I finally blurted out, suddenly scared for my life, but partially unsure if I should be. Demons of doubt danced delightfully down hallways of uncertainty. I hadn't died since the last time I died. Boulder was the first to break the silence that ensued. Adam, this will go amazingly easier if you're cooperative with- I want to talk to a lawyer! I retorted before he could finish. Detective Boulder's lips moved into a frown that looked natural to his wrinkles. A scowl of disappointment worn during every one of his interrogations, which over a very long career permanently sculpted his face. Adam, I just want to hear your side of- I said I'd like to speak to a lawyer. I know my rights. Actually, it was the only legal thing I knew. Well, that and the fact that I didn't have to say another word after it to anyone. Boulder broke his unbroken gaze with me to speak an unspoken blame upon his newest partner. He knew Detective O'Hare scared the shit out of me, and I was silent because of it. I figured if nothing else, I could wait them both out and ignore their inquiries all the while. For twenty silent minutes, my exterior was a masterpiece of perfect calm. My fleshy face turned solid to become a bust of determination. All my bones and muscles locked into place, even my neck hairs could poke your eye out. My own poker face. But inside? Well, my emotions were on fire. My breathing was being manually controlled to stop my lungs from desperately gobbling oxygen. And I wondered if a heart attack would take me before they could. I was panicking. Only because I knew. I knew what it looked like. I knew how it sounded. I just knew. I was going to jail for a crime that I would never even commit. Or to be more exact, I was going to die for a crime that I would never even commit. Alright, Adam. You're entitled to a lawyer. Boulder said eventually while standing up with O'Hare. As they walked out of the room, O'Hare puked out the last words of the interrogation. Yeah, cause you's gonna need you's a lawyer badly. They both walked out without another word, 
leaving me sitting in an empty room, staring at two empty chairs and an empty table. A man left alone to contemplate his own existence. Again. Later that evening, Detective Boulder would return home to an empty apartment. He would remove from a charred old safe a leather-bound journal he'd been writing in his whole life, or at least ever since his older brother left it to him while fighting a losing battle with cancer. His brother was 13. The first several pages, as you can imagine, were filled with childhood dreams, likes, fears, crushes. Very quickly, however, blank pages became scarce, so he decided not to write in it every day, week, or month. Not even every year. Charles Boulder would only write in his journal when the most significant events happened in his life. The day he got his first car, for example. The day he graduated police academy. The day he met his wife Mary on the force. The day they had a beautiful daughter. The year after a loving home was set ablaze by an addict seeking revenge. Then, let's just say nothing was written in his journal for a very, very long time. Nothing, that is, until the day he met me. Charles Boulder, June 6th. I met a man today suspected for murder. All evidence points to his guilt. Any other detective would determine this to be an open and shut case. Patrick certainly did. Clearly, following the evidence trail, Adam killed Evelyn. Undeniably. Then why do I believe him when he says he didn't do it? Something in his eyes. The soul in his eyes screams at me for innocence while 30 years of experience pulls me to his guilt. With the apparent deception behind the incident and capital punishment being upheld vigorously in our great state, I fear the worst. I fear if we are wrong, we may be sentencing an innocent man to his death. Alright, that was chapter 6. Um, if you liked it, like it. If you didn't like it, tell me why. Tell me what, um, and, uh, what else should I say? Uh, and, uh, subscribe so that you can hear the rest of the, uh, chapters, you know, or you can subscribe after they're all up and, you know, whatever you want to do. I don't care. Yeah, I'm good with that.